Schwarz, and I continue the case with the proposition that Mr. Schaub will present. sense, the thing that is destroying football, the thing that is taking football away from its origins, the same thing as taking society away from its origins, from its moral core. Football is not a unique entity in this process. It is merely a victim of that process. I'm not saying that we can actually save this. I'm just saying that we should at the very least regret a demise of what it was. And it's not, and it may be simply nostalgia for, for an era that we can't remember. But there are, and I'm going to talk about them later, very clear indications of the way football clubs act on the field and off the field that suggests that if this was the way all things were always, then nobody would watch football. 40,000 people would not pile into a stadium to watch 11 millionaires play 11 other millionaires if that's the way it always was. Because there is a disconnection, not only from the way that people perceive the players, but the way they perceive the clubs themselves and the success that clubs try to obtain. My hometown club, Athlone Town, recently, I say recently, like seven years ago, uh, moved from their old rickety stadium to their new rickety stadium. Uh, and when it happened, there was, there was an outpouring of nostalgia and emotion for the memories of St. Mel's Park and the events that happened in that place. They remember in the 1970s when AC Milan came to some of that awful part of the Midlands of Ireland uh, and 11 millionaires tried, tried to play 11 local amateur guys and failed. Uh, it's a famous nil-all draw uh, where Athlone Town missed a penalty. And then those same 11 local lads got to go to Italy and got to play in the Giuseppe Niazza Stadium, got to play in the famous San Siro against some of their heroes. And although they lost, which they were invariably going to do, that memory stayed not only with them, but to that entire community for 40 years afterwards. There are no memories in football like that anymore. We are denied our games against AC Milan. We are denied our games against Real Madrid. The ironic thing about Michel Platini's dual qualification system is that while it helps the Czechs and the Slovakians to have their day out, it denies the clubs at the tier right below them from ever, ever having a big club at their ground. There is now, all the big teams are now in the other half of the draw, now there's an extra round of qualification that they essentially have to get through in order to play the big money games. The best that anyone can hope for now in Ireland, in terms of Irish football teams, is to catch a falling star, like a, a, a fallen European giant like Juventus, and get beaten by them, by a team of, of completely mediocre people who won't count as anybody's heroes uh, anymore. Why is this happening? It's happening because of the profitability that's involved when big clubs play other big clubs and don't care about the small clubs. And it's because of the influence of those big clubs to create that separation, to, to kind of to make the history that is created now, and certainly wasn't always the time when Manchester United and Arsenal and Chelsea were the big clubs, but they, the clubs are very much intent on keeping that as static as possible for as long as possible. They try to create a new class system in football from the, the teams that have and the teams that have not. Is this the soul of football, this idea of meritocracy, the idea that any team can win the league? Like West Ham United are never going to win the Premiership, or at least not for like the next 50 years. And that, the sad fact is that that is absolutely true. Like there is no way that club, unless they get bought by some random, you know, Iranian or guy from Dubai, um, there's no way that can ever happen. And that's because that's exactly the way the clubs and the way FIFA and UEFA want them. They want the big names to constantly be the big names. They don't want to have to generate new brands. They don't have to need to connect with new fan bases. They like things the way they are. And you can see how, how that's done in, in the way that commercialization is, is affected the way the game is played. The game is no longer by a predominant amount of teams playing to win. It's played to avoid defeat. Teams play a paranoid style where the idea is simply not to make a mistake. And this isn't just like the middle of League Two or like you know, the Irish Premier Division. This happened in the Champions League semi-final last year when Jose Mourinho realized that because his Inter Milan team 
made fewer mistakes when they didn't have the ball and when they did have the ball, that his the very plan was to not hold onto the ball at all. Make sure you get the ball away if possible far from from even your own teammates and make them play at you, make them try and break you down. They had something like 30% or less possession over the course of those two legs. It's gotten so bad in football that the ball itself is now become an object of fear. Because if you make a mistake and you cost your club millions of pounds, then it's your fault. And now these millionaires can't take that kind of pressure. And if this accumulated to widening up ideologies of how teams play. Teams like Fulham and Stoke and Blackburn show absolutely, year in, year out, no ambition to ever move above their station. Occasionally someone will muck their way into the Europa League final, but it's okay. No one actually expects them to win. Everybody expects them to roll over for the random Spanish team that they happen to run into, and then they can go back down to 13th place in, in, in the Premier League, and no one has to, to care about that. Because all that matters is survival. Because if you don't survive in the Premier Division, you are doomed. So the only thing you can do, the only way to, to actually actuate your, your future existence is to stay exactly where you are. Don't question anything and don't move forward. Don't question your betters. Stay in your place. Perhaps the reason why we hate Manchester City is not because they spend money on success. Because all of the big clubs spend money on success. It's because there's an ingrained belief that they don't deserve to. There's an ingrained belief that they don't deserve to rise up to that place. They shouldn't be here. They don't have the history of Manchester United, or the history of Arsenal, or God forbid, the history of Chelsea, which was basically invented seven years ago. Like, the point of, of this is very simple, is that the only way you can move up, the only way you can achieve success anymore is to question your betters, is to spend 120 million on buying a team to move up because your team of 11 misfits are never going to be able on a 38 game season to achieve the level of success that is needed. We, lots of football fans, or most, most serious football fans, play football manager. We all you know, have dreams of greatness or finding that wonderful player or turning that magnificent Bosnian into like the future star or you know, that, that random computer generated 16 year old. Like, being able to find him amongst, amongst all the things. But the one thing you realize when you play football managers, when you play as an Irish club, the game basically cannot go on longer than about three years. Because in three years, you are guaranteed to have failed financially. There is no way, because none of these clubs have the kind of income streams or the business models to achieve any kind of success. The, the situation is, whereas in the Premier League, team managed to stay still by doing nothing in Ireland, they can't even do that anymore. These clubs are going into non-existence. Even at hometown, with complete lack of ambition at, at all, ever, uh, we've spent the last 20 years in third last place in the first division. Regardless of how many clubs were created or ceased to be, uh, above them and below them, they were always still in that one place as if they booked it out for the rest of eternity. Um, <laughs> even they can't sustain that anymore. Even they can't even sustain their own mediocrity anymore. So you see that teams begin to change and you learn this in football management that there is a way to get success is you have to gamble. You have to gamble that you might just, just maybe if you spend ridiculous amounts of money, you might uh, or gamble your future, you might actually manage to win the Premier League. You might actually get to go to play that, that, that Champions League tie, which by the way won't be against, you know, anything good, it'll probably be against Red Star Belgrade or something. But even that revenue stream is enough um, to get you where you, where you want to go. Basically, football clubs outside, the, outside of the elite have, are starting to act like crack dealers in South Central LA. You, to, you get rich or you die trying. And we see this. We see this in teams like Hull City who had the audacity to try for, for one season to try and be among the big boys, to finally make it in the top line. Those two years they've spent in the Premier League have completely destroyed that football club. That club which existed for maybe a hundred years or so is now going to, is probably going to cease to exist sometime in the next five years. Portsmouth again had the audacity to decide that they maybe wanted to win one FA Cup ever. Like, like seriously, that's not the world's biggest ambition ever. But even they felt that it wasn't possible to do because the gamble is ultimately a losing one. 
almost all of the teams that gamble and try to move their way up, unless they have the financial backing, will necessarily fail. I was watching Monday Night Soccer, which for the people who aren't Irish, is, or people who don't you know, watch it, is the uh, League of Ireland highlight show on uh, RT. It, it's awful stuff. But <laughs> they were talking about Drama the United, who were three years ago were, were, the, were the champions of, of, of Ireland, and this year are staring, well, not staring, but they are basically being relegated uh, tomorrow, basically. Um, but they asked him, a very, they asked Richie Baker, one of the panelists, a very interesting question. They asked him, did, what, was the club too ambitious? The question they asked, given that the money they'd spent had been the ultimate cause of their demise, should they have tried in the first place to try to win the league title? And he said on national television, in front of presumably people who, who look at him as, as some sort of you know, peer or, or, or some sort of peer, he said yes. Teams shouldn't try to be ambitious. Yeah, it's nice to win a league title, but survival is all that matters. And the message continues to resonate, and it continues to resonate now among all of society, between the haves and the have-nots. Stay in your place and don't question the world order. Football used to be a meritocracy, where 11 players had to play against 11 players, regardless of who they were. It's not anymore, and there are no more heroes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why football has lost its place.